I'm sure there are some of you that are subscribed to this channel, and those of you that aren't, you should. You should smash it now and follow the show on Twitter. Are probably going to ask in the comments, where's your NXT TakeOver review? We've got two nights of it. We're due, entitled to at least one monster review or two nightly reviews. Come on, Schleg Daddy, what are you doing? I'm doing exactly what the hell other sensible people should be doing. Not watching that flippy, kicky, high production value, indie fed, hunter god garbage. That's what. Especially in a week. I already watched Dynamite Wednesday night. Pieces of Raw Monday night. Now you turn around and you got freaking SmackDown on Friday and two nights of WrestleMania. Right? Gotta have lives at some point in time, people. And, and trust and believe. No matter how much you want to try and make it that way, the wrestling is just not of that caliber or standard that necessitates or requires you watching that much in a given week. Get a clue, get a life, get laid, I don't care what the hell you do, but step away from your streaming devices at least a little bit. Not until you have to watch this video, of course. But maybe I say that because I'm a little jaded and irked about WrestleMania this year. Like, how the fuck we get a two-night show and they still couldn't manage their time well enough to fit all of the matches they intended on two nights? Like, even when you see what's happening on SmackDown on Friday night. Like, I gotta take shit that would normally be on the WrestleMania show, and they gotta put it on SmackDown. Hello! You lengthened it out to two damn nights, and you can't fit everything in. It's a crock. And more and more as you go along, honestly, the WrestleMania card this year is a crock. Like, take a step back and really look at this card. And tell me, does this really feel like a WrestleMania card? Do you feel that emotionally invested in that many characters, that many stories, that many matches? If you are, I want to know what the hell you're smoking. I realize weed is getting legalized in more and more states, which is a good thing, obviously. But uh, maybe I'll need to lay him off the peace pipe just a little bit. Because, man, I tell you, it looks like jobber mania. And even a couple of the notable marquee matches that I would have, in theory, looked forward to tremendously and was looking forward to tremendously, over a course of a period of the past few weeks, the WWE has done as much as they could, as much as they could, and successfully, to squash most, if not all, of my interest in those matches. I can't be the only one that's feeling this way. I can't be the only one that's looking at this and saying, oh, great. Got two nights of this crap. Like, you look at night one. You've got this four-team ladies tag team turmoil match where the winner gets a tag title shot on night two. Really? You got to have a tag match on both nights for the ladies? Is that really needed? And maybe this speaks to the larger problem here of, I understand this is Vince trying to throw a frickin' bone to some people here, but the reality is, is not everybody needs to be on WrestleMania. And furthermore, not everybody should be on WrestleMania, nor should they deserve to be booked on WrestleMania. Like, WrestleMania should be a big deal. It should be to reward the best of your best. And it's just like giving a participate or a trophy the same size as the winner when the kid comes in butt naked last. The kid that finishes last is fucking embarrassed and the winner feels devalued because it didn't matter. Bad all the way around. Stop trying to fit everybody on the damn WrestleMania card and maybe these shows would be a little bit better. I'd rather have one four hour show than two nights of three plus hours. That's just me personally. Because the quality of the content, the characters, the storytelling, the matches aren't there. They just aren't. It's ridiculous. And, and like I'm looking at some of the other things on this card for night one. You got Cesaro and Seth Rollins. Oh God. Seth Rollins. Hashtag Peacock Slayer. It's going to be a mad rush to the bathroom for that one. You got Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon. Like the, the build up for that. 
has been horrendous. Almost as horrendous as Seth Rollins' suit game. Almost as horrendous. No, you know what? Probably even more horrendous than that saying something. You've taken Braun and made him look stupid, because it kind of is. And Shane McMahon's been really bad in this, and yet I find myself wanting Shane McMahon to win on Saturday. <laughs> so whatever you were trying to accomplish, WWE, it didn't fucking work. Are you going to do this stupid train sound effects during their match? <laughs> it's a steel cage match. <laughs> Hopefully it ends with something like Braun throws Shane through the cage so that way he wins. Because at some point in time, if Shane doesn't win one of these fucking matches at Mania once in a while, it defeats the purpose and it's just a gigantic waste of time. Which I think a lot of you might potentially look at these two nights at WrestleMania and feel like they're going to feel like a waste of time. You got the New Day defending against AJ Styles and Amos. I think everybody feels like this is pretty telegraphed who's going to win. Yeah, maybe. Like, Okay. Is there anything really cool or exciting about that? You know, one of the matches that does have some reason for existing that's been building for a little while, Bad Bunny uh, and Damian Priest versus The Miz and Morrison. Like, it started off as a singles match, and then we knew it was probably going to end up being a tag match. Like, I got nothing but respect for Bad Bunny. It's clear that he takes this seriously. It's not a joke. It's not a fucking gimmick for him. Like, he's respecting wrestling He's respecting the art form and the craft, and he's trying to put his best foot forward. And I can respect that, so I'm glad he has a fucking match at Mania. And frankly, some of the other people that are in WWE could take some freaking cues from him. Honestly. Honestly. Um, but you, you know how that match is going to go, but... You know, he's been there for a while now, for a couple of months. Like, he's earned that spot. Am I really looking that forward to that match? Eh, not really, but it doesn't irritate me or bother me. But again, like, as I look even throughout night one, it's just, these matches just aren't grabbing you by the balls. You get to the two most noteworthy matches of the night, it's certainly going to be Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. And I look at that and say, yeah, absolutely, that match has the potential to feel like a physical man's brawl a main event worthy type of match, a match that could be really good at WrestleMania, but there's always that piece of lingering doubt there about whether or not they're just going to use this as a platform to have Drew McIntyre go over. And if they do, fuck them. And they deserve all the shit that they'll get for it because it's stupid. He had his time. It's Bobby Lashley's time. And Bobby Lashley must retain at WrestleMania, period. Now, we'll see whether this ends up being the main event or if it's Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I'd assume it's going to be the ladies' main eventing at this point. And a couple of months ago, this had me kind of excited, pretty excited. And then the build for this has just been god-awful. God-awful. Like, how do, you, how do you take this match and ruin so much interest in it? Now, this could really, really deliver. It could also underwhelm. I will admit that a lot of you will probably like this no matter what because you stand for one or both of these ladies. Whatever. You know, sometimes it's still nice to have some standards. Um, but yeah, like, I'm not always a fan of Sasha's work in the ring. So we'll see. I hope they really deliver. And I certainly hope that they're given the main event spot, which, like I said before, I don't fundamentally have a problem with. It shouldn't even have been in doubt, and over the past several weeks, they kind of put it in doubt as to whether or not you really wanted to see this main event. That's the fault of the WWE. But it better deliver. Don't be like the last ladies' main event at Mania that was really, really lame and horrible. At least we don't have Charlotte there to screw it up, that's for sure. Uh, but night one like feels like a jobber night for the most part. It really does. And then you look at night two. You got Nia and Shayna... Shayna Defending against whoever wins the tag team turmoil match in night one. Like, who cares? You got... Yeah, the, what's my... Oh, I forgot my line. Defending against Sheamus. Like, that seemed to kind of come out of fucking nowhere. And who the hell with NBC, USA Network, thinks that Matt Riddle is appealing? Who the hell keeps pushing this ass at? Sickening. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn would be really cool if I hadn't seen it a hundred fucking times already. Like, I love the turn that Sami's made in the past year plus to become 
less of a flippy floppy fuck guy and more of an actual performer and character, it's made a huge difference. And having Logan Paul there should feel like a big deal, but it feels like that's been kind of shoehorned in at the last minute. And again, like for some of y'all, you're going to sit there and say, it's like Final Battle 2010, it's at this time, it's at WrestleMania, the biggest show of them all. And it's like, yeah, at some point in time, you know, been there, done that. We've seen enough of these guys wrestle each other over the years. And I just, no, like, I didn't want to see this at WrestleMania, I'm sorry. You got Apollo Crews and Biggie in a Nigerian drum fight, whatever the fuck that's supposed to be. Like, can't it just be a street fight? Like, why are we always going to do that? Because Apollo discovered his Nigerian ancestry, so Vince has got to go Punjabi prison style with the match stipulation. Like, who gives a shit? The Fiend versus Randy Orton. Like, the build for this feels like it's been going on for months and months. And, you know, there are times I would sit there and say, wrestling needs more of that. And I'd be okay with that. But it's also been really bad. Like, really, really bad. It crossed that line from corny but good to just corny. It's corny. And it's not corny. Good. It's bad. I mean, can, you can just hear the lack of energy in my voice. The lack of enthusiasm in my voice. And it's not because I work 14 hours a day. It's not because... I'm sleeping like four or five hours a night. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. It has to totally do with the fact that this shit just does not look good. There's just not a lot of sizzle there. Like Rhea Ripley versus Asuka, you know, that could potentially actually be a sleeper match for me and be pretty good. But you already missed your opportunity with Rhea as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? Like, I, let me say, I don't want to say it's too little too late, but you should have already done this shit before and you just couldn't help yourself last year, could you? But, and then we get to the main event. And, and honestly, admittedly, this is probably the whole impetus of a lot of the way I'm feeling about this show. Like, we were pointing towards Edge versus Roman, and everything about that to me was fine, it was working. You got the legend who was gone almost a decade, who goes the entire way in the Royal Rumble. He gets that potentially one last shot at title gold, one last opportunity at the top, one last chance to main event WrestleMania, one last chance to feel the glow of the spotlight and the adjuration and the support of the millions of millions, or in this case, it feels like more and more hundreds of thousands of fans. Like you have that dynamic. You have... The career-ending injury that he came back from. You have Roman Reigns and the career-threatening leukemia. And he had to get stripped of a title. He had to surrender a title that he never lost. And he came back and won it. Like, there's so many things about this. And if you would have just been able to spend two months focusing on the star power of these two. And focusing on the alpha male, alpha male energy of these two. Like, we should be pointing towards a really kick-ass main event at WrestleMania night two. Unfortunately, we had to sit there and squeeze the fucking Keebler elf in at some point. It's ironic, so many of you used to love him because you thought he was the anti-breakfast club establishment guy. Well, fuck, we need your breakfast club giller. It looks like he's pretty breakfast fucking club to me. Get yourself on creative and weasel yourself into the fucking title match and make it a triple threat at WrestleMania and ruin all the build-up for it. Now, sure, some of you are going to sit there and say, well, you know, they needed him in there because they didn't think Edge could go so long and they wanted to have somebody else there. You know what? Then Daniel Bryan should have won the fucking Rumble. Once they went with Edge, they should have went with Edge and they went all the way. Not every fucking main event of Mania needs to go 40 damn minutes, to be clear. And just threw off all the fucking dynamics of this. All the alpha energy we're burning, building up is now freaking gone. They're trying to present Daniel Bryan as somebody to cheer. All the whining, well, he's really truly been a whining, sniveling, heelish ass Gen Z slash millennial entitled asshat. Why the fuck would you get behind him or support him in any fucking way whatsoever? And it's like... Oh, they put him in there so he could do the job for somebody. Okay, so he's going to do the frickin' job for Edge? I mean, if he does the job for Roman, that's even more fucking ridiculous. You're going to have Edge face Roman, then you sit there and you have Roman beat Edge. Like, that's the natural order of things here. Or you don't. 
You use the veteran experience, and on that one given night, he had that one moment, and then the tribal chief comes back pissed, and you've got another two, three matches between the two that you can build towards. Like, there's a potential that this match could still be very good. I, I'm not going to deny that. Like, these are guys that I would trust in a main event spot like WrestleMania, all three of them, frankly, to potentially deliver and figure out the chemistry and how it works and everything. But it was just like, where seven years ago a lot of people feel like it was organic and it connected and resonated with them, you know, you know, you know this time it doesn't. It feels like it was forced. It's dumb. It just... They screwed up so much about this fucking WrestleMania. I want to be clear on that. And like I said, you can clearly hear it in my energy. My energy involving this show is not good. And as much as I could say, I could do better to check that, I could do better to have a different perspective on it, and sometimes that is certainly true. I don't think I need to in this case. This is solely entirely the fault of WWE. They've put out what looks to me like a largely unappealing two-night jobber fest that they've packaged up as WrestleMania. And it's even going to feel jobber fest when you have, what, 25,000 fans there at Raymond James Stadium. Sure, it's not in the Performance Center like last year. Added bonus. But it's still going to feel like a half ass WrestleMania, let's be clear. Last year's did. A lot of y'all were probably happy about it because you got a couple of matches you really liked. And you had some type of positive distraction, which I totally get and I totally understand. And that's part of the reason why I didn't do a night two review last year because I didn't want to be too negative of a piece of shit about it. And I don't want to sit there and rain on everybody's parade at a time where it felt like they probably needed that stuff. But this year, I mean, really seriously, take a step back and look at this card and tell me, try to tell me, try to sell me on the fact that this actually feels like a big deal. Try to sell me on the fact that this feels like a big time WrestleMania. Because you know you can't. 